I had a lot of people write in and say, you have to check out this Def Leppard tab book. It's one with two albums on it. So it has High and Dry and it has Pyromania. And so I ordered it, it showed up the other day and I looked through it and I'm like, I have to do a video for this one. This one's crazy. The Atari 2600 controller is back. The joystick as they called them. So that's gonna be my page holder. So here it is, very vintage looking. The pages are very yellow. You know, that just happens with age, but also some of the pages are more yellow than others. So I think the uh, owner was a heavy smoker. And you could definitely tell which songs he focused on more because the pages are more yellow. It's kind of funny. As I flipped through it, at first I didn't think it was a tab book. I thought it was just a chord book because, uh, you know, the first half is different from the second half. So the first half of the book are the chords, the uh, lyrics, and the melody for the lyrics. As you keep going halfway through, suddenly it changes over into a tab book. I thought that was really interesting. But what they did was they said, okay, if you want to learn some of the intros and some of the solos to these songs, you have to flip to other parts of the book. I thought that was really strange. So let's pretend you wanted to learn the song Photograph. Okay, so you open it up to Photograph. You're all excited and you notice there's no tab. Let's say you didn't flip through the book yet. You're like, oh no, there's just gonna be chords, you know? Maybe if you're an acoustic player, that's cool. But if you have an electric guitar and you wanna learn the riffs and everything like that, it's gonna bum you out. But then if you look at the very beginning, it says, see page 100. So it's kind of like a choose your own adventure thing where all of a sudden you find yourself flipping to the end of the book. Okay, where's page 100? Okay, there it is. Oh, it's photograph again, but this time it's, the tab version of it. So then you try to learn the intro using the tab and then you'd have to go back to do the verses, which is crazy. All right, let's get into some of these tunes here. Okay, so for the song, Another Hit and Run, something really interesting happens. First of all, there's a part right before the solo where Steve does a trill and the sound rises in pitch. It's a really cool sound. <laughs> the book says, note, the sound of the next break was created by gradually speeding the tape up. First of all, that's not correct. That's not what's going on. You can tell when you really learn how this works, but I thought that was kind of funny that they explained it away like that. And then it says, you can imitate it like this. Tune your top E string down to A. That's kind of suspect right off the bat. Some red flags going off. Now start a trill going from the 10th fret to the 12th fret. Reach your right hand over and rapidly retune your first string back to the E while you keep the trill going. That's a lot to ask somebody to do right before they're about to kick into a guitar solo, but let's give it a try and see. So I'll use my tuner. Let's go all in on this here. I'll tune it down to A. Please don't break string. This is when strings usually break when I detune them quickly. I still get that nervous feeling because my strings have broken so many times in this situation. Okay, now I have to trill on the 10th fret and the 12th fret while retuning the string. This is gonna be interesting, let's try it. Actually, that sounds pretty close, wow. See, back in the day, we had to compensate for lack of technology with creativity and ingenuity, so that's a really clever way to get that sound, but it's very impractical. Like I said, you're not gonna to wanna to do that right before a guitar solo. All right, now this book is pretty generous. They give us another way to do it, it's still incorrect, but it could work. So it says to trill starting on the eighth and 10th fret on the second string and just bring it up a fret each time. That's another way to do it. Now I have the advantage of being able to look at old footage of Def Leppard live and I watched Steve do this and right before the solo kicks in, he trills, but he reaches his picking hand over and he bends the string up. It's a great trick to do if you don't have a Floyd Rose trem system and you want this kind of effect. Reach over and pull the string up while you're trilling and it kind of sounds like you're using a whammy bar. Is that cool? All right, let's switch guitars. Okay, next song. Let's check out Bringing On The Heartbreak. One of my favorite Def Leppard songs. I love the intro because it's the dueling harmonizing guitars. Now, if I was the only guitarist in the band and I had to play that intro, I would do sort of a composite of both guitar players' parts, and I would probably do something like this. Now, that would probably work just fine in a live situation, 
The book, however, tries to show you how to play the harmonized parts on one guitar. It says, note, lines may be played on one or two guitars. So let me try it and see how it sounds. Okay, already red flags. You can already hear that it's wrong. Sounds pretty bad on that third note. That's not even close. At the end, it sounds horrible. Could you imagine the reaction you'd get if you learned that, went to band practice and said, okay guys, I learned the actual solo. I have the tab book, uh, let's give it a try. And you played that? I think it probably resulted in a lot of broken friendships. Now for the song Die Hard the Hunter, there's what I call the impossible stretch. And I feel really bad when I see this in a tab book because I remember how it felt when I couldn't quite reach something that was actually incorrectly tabbed. And thinking that I just didn't have a big enough hand or something, I thought it was my fault. So what they say to do for the intro is this. Look at this stretch. They want us to go from the seventh fret on the fifth string all the way to the second fret on the second string. And then you have to take your middle finger and play the fourth fret of the fourth string. Now don't attempt to do that if you're not warmed up because you will hurt your hand. I recommend doing the finger stretches, the finger yoga that we do on the website before you do anything like that. And it's a shame because you don't have to do this impossible stretch. You could just go like this for the real version. Let's skip ahead to Foolin' since I'm in clean sound right now. Right off the bat it says acoustic guitar, finger style, which is incorrect. If you listen to the recording, you could tell it's picked. So I feel kind of bad. Somebody puts the pick down, they're gonna do finger style for this intro because it's not really how it goes. I'm just gonna use a pick. Here's what the tab says to do for the intro. See how awkward that ending is? That always sets off a red flag whenever something's supposed to sound real smooth, whenever it's like an arpeggio, and all of a sudden you hear something like, that always tips me off that the tab is incorrect. So once again, they say to go. I could probably make that a lot smoother if I practiced it, but when you see the real version, you're gonna see why that's kind of a waste of time. So the real version's more like this. Then the second part's pretty much the same thing, they just invert the last two notes. So one of my favorite Def Leppard riffs is the intro to Let It Go. It sounds a little bit like an ACDC riff or something like that. And uh, the real version's close to something like this. How does the book transcribe it? Like this. Something I notice about this book is they seem to hate traditional power chord shapes. So even though you're just supposed to go like this at the end, they have us barring across and doing inverted fifths instead like this. Almost like you're playing smoke on the water throughout this entire book. It's really strange how much they shy away from the standard power chord shape. I don't know why, but right after you play the first riff twice, they change the starting point to it. So this little lick here, they have us now starting A on the fifth fret of the sixth string every time. Talk about a confusing thing for beginners. All right, we're back to photograph. They have the intro like this. It's not bad, it's just a little bit weak. It's kind of like in that ACDC book where they have us playing You Shook Me All Night Long like this. Instead of playing here, where it's a lot fatter. So this book kind of does that same thing where it's incorrect and it doesn't sound as big and bold as the actual way to play it. So let's play the real way. Isn't that much more powerful than going like this? So I love playing it the real way. If you watch the early versions and you watch Steve's hand, he's actually doing it here. 
Later on in the uh, more modern times, you could see them playing it here, which is interesting. <laughs> one of those songs that doesn't have the solo included so I bet you the person was excited and they flip to the next page to find the solo and instead they see stage fright and they're probably like oh man and the last song we'll talk about is Rock of Ages still one of my favorite Def Leppard songs here's how they have us doing the intro in the book <laughs> Not terrible, that could definitely pass in certain situations, but here's the real way. I saved the best for last now. They tried to transcribe the solo, and I could kind of see why they left a lot of the solos out of this book, because uh, if they're anything like this one, it's probably a good thing. So the actual solo is pretty close to this. How does the book have us play it? Like this. Now I'm not sure what this big arch is after the 11th fret. Maybe it's a whammy bar. That's actually probably what it is. I think they had limited symbols back in the day that they used in tab, so you just kind of had to guess sometimes. Okay, everyone, I hope you had fun watching this. It's always fun to make these videos, like I said, and I really appreciate everyone who wrote in and told me I had to check out this book. And if you have any more suggestions, let me know, because I'm sure there are a lot more out there in the world that I just don't know about yet. So, okay, everyone, thanks a lot. We'll see you at the next video. See ya.